if we brush them before we get it off, it'll be easier to get it clean afterwards. Yeah, that's where all the topical stuff is, the big stuff. Alvina is back. Good to see you again. Good to see you, sir. You know what? You made this process look fairly easy. Well, I'm glad, because <laughs> it's not. You know what? You have, you said 80? Yes, sir. Have 80 yourself. head. And you just did several the other day. So you've, you've got it down to almost 10 minutes. It take, took a little bit. This is the second year that we've shorn our own herd. So, and I just learned last year. So it's a little bit. So here we have the whole process of, of shearing back here behind us. So basically, you drive two T-posts, you harness them mm -hmm. so they can't get away. How long did it take you to figure this out? How much of this is, is textbook stuff and how much is Alvina's process? Well, we did have a professional shearer come and give a pretty intensive three-day class. And uh, at the end of the class, we took about 40 minutes per head. Right. So, I mean, because you are, you are handling a an instrument that could be lethal. I mean, this thing could cause some serious damage. So uh, so you go slow at first to make sure that you're safe. Because that's really, at the end of the day, you know, if, if you go fast and you end up, end up cutting them, then you're gonna be there a whole lot longer right. bandaging, patching them, patching them up, you know. It pays off to go slow in the, in the beginning. But yeah, once you get the hang of it and you just have that awareness of which angle you have to go in certain body part areas to minimize the, the risk of cutting them, um, then it goes much quicker. So this is the blanket. This is the prime fiber. This looks better from uh, the inside than the out. Milton liked to roll in the duty a bit. Yeah, yeah, his outside was a little dirty, but I mean, feel that. Wow. That was what was close to the skin. And we talked off camera a little bit about, you know, how some people, wool is, if you look at it under a microscope, it's kind of spiky. Wool has barbs. And lanolin. Yes. Um, if somebody's allergic to wool, it's usually two things. It's either the lanolin, this is the oil that she produced, or the fiber itself has um, scales along it. All protein fibers do. Um, but the ones on wool stick out away from the fiber shaft, so it causes a little bit of a prickle. Wakaya alpaca has half that, and then Surrey alpaca has half of Wakaya. So wow. it feels softer, even if it's the same grade. So that's why it is so desirable. It is. Mm -hmm. One of the many reasons. You know, a lot of people have forgotten and have gotten so far away from the land, from the farming process, from the fact that, okay, these mm -hmm. are lambs and we're gonna eat these lambs. Mm -hmm. No apologies here for that, I'm sorry. Is there a market for the meat on some of these Whoa. animals? Absolutely. At a certain point, their fiber quality does degrade, and what, how many years that is just depends on their genetics. Right. Some maintain it well into their teens and sometimes 20, but some of them aren't born with good fiber, right. you know? So it's up to us to breed for good fiber, which, you know, we want, because this right. is good stuff. But once it does degrade, then they go to the great green pasture in the sky, and they make a really healthy, nutritious meat product as well. You know what, these were raised, these animals in their original wherever they were brought up. The, Let's talk about that. The Andes, Altiplano. For meat and fiber. Yes, sir. Or fiber and meat. Oh, <laughs> you, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? If you haven't had it, it's amazing meat. It is, there's zero wild gamey taste in it. It's some of the sweetest, best protein you can find out there. It's we delicious. really enjoy it. But this right here is probably the main the This main is thing. the main crop. I mean, the good thing, I mean, you, you compare it to other red meat animals, for instance, um, which are a sole use, like they're raised for the meat. Uh, alpacas are growing fiber the whole time, so you might as well get this good crop off of them, you know, because that's what they're really raised for. And then really it's the culls that go to meat, but it's, it's such a high quality product that you get two really good harvests out of them. Now, when you take this back home, is there mm -hmm. any, what's what's the process? Do you wash this in any way? Shape? Oh gosh, yeah. If you were wearing a sweater for a year, how dirty do you think it would be? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know where Milton's so, been. <laughs> so, yeah, so you don't want poop in your sweater. Poop's not good. No, no, seed heads, burrs, all that kind of stuff. So we hand pick it as best we can first. And then um, uh, if we are gonna process it ourselves into clothes, then I wash it in my bathtub. You know, we just use a Dawn dishwashing soap. Um, sometimes it takes a couple washes and then 
and you know, like four or five rinses. And then from there, we gotta brush it so all of the fibers are aligned, so they're all going in the same direction. And then from there, it can be spun into yarn. And then you gotta turn the, use some other method to turn the yarn into clothes. Because it's not just about the clothes too, it's about how everything works together. It's a system and that's how we do small sustainable agriculture is you have all these different plants and animals that are working together. And so clothes is a part of that as well. I mean, it's such an essential thing that we take for granted, Flo food, clothes, shelter. You know, all of, all of them come from nature. Wow. Everything so else is used for other purposes. The neck is good for, for yarn too. It's just typically not as uniform in length. Uncle Milty? Oh my! <laughs> they can be. Who is that? <laughs> His pants are a little uneven. <laughs> <laughs> They're like help. So, so right now, somebody's saying, "I want to go out there." Mm -hmm. How do they find you? Look up our website. It's RiverHillRanch.us for United States. And we have a tab there that you can click on and learn about the tours and the times and all that kind of stuff. And then wow. even though we may not have our own product in the store right now, we have all of theirs. So we have socks, hats, gloves, sweaters, even dresses. Wow. Made out of Outback. Hats? Yeah. Hats. Yeah. Have you seen my Outback hat? I have not. Yeah. It's a felt hat. It's made right, right down the road, Springfield, Kentucky. And um, it's like I Indiana tell you what, Jones type yeah, thing. it has that look to it. But um, because alpaca naturally wicks moisture, it's not chemically treated with anything, but it's waterproof. You can wear it out in the rain, and uh, it's um, steam set, so you can wad that sucker up into a ball. I especially love at farmers market, telling little boys, wad it up into a ball, <laughs> and their mom's looking at me like. Sure. And so then it comes yeah. right back to the yeah, original Yeah, it just right back into its shape. Son of a gun. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming out today. Well, and thank you for having us. And, and hope to see you soon. Yes, Uncle sir. Uncle Milty's so much more happier. I bet he's, uh, he's much cooler. He's chilling. Oh, yeah. Literally. <laughs>